Hey, welcome back. One way to mitigate against common cyber security threat is to encrypt sensitive or valuable data. Encryption is the process of making data unreadable and unusable to unauthorized viewers. To use or read encrypted data, it must be decrypted, which requires the use of security key. And the next thing we are going to learn about in this lesson is hashing. Hashing is the process of transforming any given key or a string of numbers into another value. The next topic we are going to learn is digital signature or sign in. Digital signature is a mathematical scheme for demonstrating the authenticity of digital messages or documents. So let's go and learn about encryption, hashing and sign in. Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Let's start by understanding the types of encryption. There are primarily two top level types of encryption, symmetric and asymmetric. Symmetric encryption uses the same key to encrypt and decrypt the data. Asymmetric encryption uses a public key and private key pair. Either key can encrypt data, but a single key can't be used to decrypt encrypted data. To decrypt, you need a paired key. Asymmetric encryption is used for things like transport layer security, which is known as TLS, such as the HTTPS protocol and data signing. Encryption may protect data at rest or in transit. When it comes to encryption, we need to understand two concepts, encryption at rest and encryption in transit. So what is encryption at rest? Data at rest is the data that's stored on a physical device such as a server. It may be stored in a database or a storage account, but regardless of where it is stored, encryption of data at rest ensures that the data is unreadable without the keys and secrets needed to decrypt it. So let's imagine a scenario where if an attacker obtained a hardware with encrypted data and didn't have the access to the encryption keys, they would be unable to read the data. What about encryption in transit? Data in transit is the data moving from one location to another, such as across the internet or through a private network. Secure transfer can be handled by several different layers. It could be done by encrypting the data at the application layer before sending it over a network. HTTPS is an example of encryption in transit. Encrypting data in transit protects it from outside observers and provides a mechanism to transmit data while limiting the risk of exposure. Now let us learn about hashing. Hashing uses an algorithm to convert the original text to unique fixed length hash value. Each time the same text is hashed using the same algorithm, the same hash value is produced. That hash can be used as a unique identifier of its associated data. Hashing is different to encryption in that it doesn't use keys and the hashed value isn't subsequently decrypted back to the original. And hashing is used to store passwords. When a user enters their password, the same algorithm that created the stored hash creates a hash of the entered password. This is compared to the stored hashed version of the password. If they match, the user has entered their password correctly. This is more secure than storing plain text passwords. But hashing algorithms are also known to hackers. Because hash functions are deterministic, Hackers can use brute force directory attacks by hashing the passwords. For every matched hash, they know the actual password. To mitigate the risk, passwords are often stalled. This refers to adding a fixed length random value to the input of hash functions to create unique hashes for every input. As hackers can't know the salt, as hackers can't know the salt value, the hash passwords are more secure. So what is signing? 
signing using a digital signature verifies that a message that has been sent by the sender and the content haven't been tampered with. Signing a message doesn't encrypt or alter the message. Signing works by creating a digital signature string that can either be sent with the message or transmitted separately. The digital signature is generated by the private key owner and attached to the message. The receiver can then verify that it was created by the key owner by using the public key. Let's look at an example. There are two steps involved in creating digital signature from a message. The first hash value is created from the message. In the second step, the hash value is signed using the signer's private key. At the receiving end, the message is hashed again and verified against the digital signature, which is decrypted using the public key. If they match, you can be confident that the message is the same one that the signer originally signed and that it hasn't been tampered with. To protect data from compromise and authenticate the center at the same time, encryption and digital signing are used together. They are both used in tandem to fulfill compliance standards like FIPS and GDPR. Encryption and digital signing ensures these standards are reached and that the users can be secure in the knowledge that that the data sent to and from will not be compromised. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about Microsoft privacy principles and we are going to explore the service trust portal. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.